Okay, hi everyone. This is going to be just a quick video to kind of help you with the LIDA certifications. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at um, two uh, returns and how you would input them and how that would help you with the answers. Generally, right, there's like 30 questions. The last half, the last 15, you need to, uh, in theory, enter the information into the software and then use the output to help answer that. I have hints in here to help you. Right, that's great. You can use the hints, right? So a lot of them are there. Um, I just want to show you kind of the process of getting into the software. So I'm going to do, and I already have the inputs for it to kind of expedite things, showing you the first return and the second return, right? For those last 15 questions. The third return, I want you to do yourself, right? At some point, I kind of have to take the training, training wheels off here. Okay, so you're going to go, um, right, to actually take the exam in Link and Learn, right? So you'll see it like 30 questions. Or again, we're focusing on the last 15 here. And specifically, right, what we're going to be looking at, if I open this up, uh, is scenario seven that has some information, right, some tax documents, and then some questions. And then we're going to look at scenario eight, right? So this is like question 14 out of 30, right? We're looking at that back half of the questions. Okay, so in theory, what we need to do is put this in the software, right? So you go to the software here, the password is train pro web, all caps, right? So we go here, we hit train pro web, all caps. Let me get this out of the road here, right? If you haven't already done so, you need to create an account. So do that, create the account. I already have one created. All right, so then you hit sign in. Then you go to practice area right here, okay? Now, hypothetically, what you would do is, right, for this guy, and we did it, we started in class, you would go and click start a new return, and you would input their name. Like, it would start with the social security number, which you could grab right here. Just put it as, like, 127 and then the rest zeros, right? Um you would start a new return, you'd put that information in. I already have, right under client search, because I've you know, done these returns, the information right here. Okay, so if we go to the basic information, right, what I did was the filing status, right, they were, um, is this, no, we're on the second return here, let me go back, I'm sorry. Client search, right? So this is like one of your old ones. It's uh, Owen Walker, right? This one. That's the first one, right? Owen, okay? So again, basic information, right? You can pause this video if you're trying to put it in the software, right? So like filing status, they were MFJ, right? We put that in. Uh, in there, right, whenever we did this, like MFJ, we then put in their basic information. We grabbed the dates, right, the information, uh, their birthdays and, and an address from that form, right? All of these are left blank on there for this guy. Then we do the wife, right? We leave all of those blank. There's her address. That's great. We put in information for the dependent, right, the kid, Shelby Walker, right? So we inputted that. And then what we did is, right, you just go step by step, right? We put in the general information, then we do the tax documents, right? So the W-2, you go there, add, right? We input it, we input that information just like we saw it, right? You hit continue. So you input the W-2, check mark. Input the social security document, right? You go to in income. Over here, right, Social Security benefits, right, you'd find it, it's like this guy right here, you input it. Uh, uh, you know, the 1099R, the general one, and then the Social Security, you put those in one at a time, right? So 1099R, you do it, then you do a second one for Social Security. Then you input the dividends right here, right, there's uh, dividend income, so where did we put that at? Interest in dividend income, I think that was oh right here. Okay, so you can see if the if the block the box here is black, add edit, 
that's where we input this information, right? It's already in there. So we just worked our way through the 1098T. We put that under education credits here for deductions, right? So you input all that information, right? Then you go to summary print, right? And the idea with this is, right, we would use this form right here, right? You could go to the different pages of it, right? Like page two, the other schedules. But we would use this information to help us answer, among other things, these questions. Right, so the one question here says, what's the standard deduction, right? So we're looking at, um, you know, husband and wife there. There's their information. There's their dependent, right? It looks like their standard deduction is 29.2, right? Uh, one of the things with it, right, when we entered in that 1098T, what we put was, um, you know, kind of the gross amount in one box for the tuition. Then we put the grants in the second box. And in the third box, we put the 1050 for the educational expenses. It was the 850 plus the 200. So you could pause it, go back and look at it. But essentially, it's only truly out of pocket costs that count. If you get a scholarship, that, that doesn't count. We can see Right. Um, here's Social Security, the gross amount, 15,000. Oh, the taxable amount. Remember, because it's like kind of phased in how they tax that is 12,715. Right. We go to the second page. Right. There's, you know, um, you know, how much we owe. Hey, here's how much federal income tax withheld, 11,240. Right. It looks like we're getting a credit here, 500 bucks for that kid. Right. Credit for other dependents. So you could probably find that in one of these other tabs down here. But that's the first return. Right. You just input it like that. This is you know, just a short video kind of you know, giving you the basics, the blocking and the tackling. The second return. Right. So what you would do. So I'm going to hit save and exit return. Right, you would start a new return again. You would input the information. Here it's for Zoe Watson, right? So we're moving now down for this guy right here, this girl, right? She's 47. She has two kids, right? So there's Zoe. Uh, it looks like her only income is really disability income. And the one thing here is she's going to be under uh, the age that's going to essentially make it. Um, so if we look here, receive, and she has not reached the minimum age of her employer's plan. So what this means is the disability pension is going to be taxable. You could like look that up in the book and see it on there. Um, so again, what do we do here, right? Well, we would start with the basic information, right? The filing status. She would be head of household, right? Because she's taking care of those kids. She's like a single mom. We would then input the information for the two kids. The one thing you got to be careful here with uh, is Joshua. When you input that in, you do have to check that box down there. He's disabled, right? Uh, that's indicated in the facts. We go to the federal section, right? The only document she has is going to be this uh, disability income, 1099R, right? So 45,000, 1,500 withheld, box three. We enter that into the software right here exactly as we see it. This return is pretty straightforward, right? We then go to summary print. And again, I'm doing this at like blazing speed and putting this information, right? These kind of the first return, if you were to really put it in slowly your first time, it could take you a couple hours to put that in because you're just like learning, like click this. Uh, the more efficient you become, right, the, the better and quicker it is. Right, but we look at it, right? It looks like her filing status is head of household, right? She has the two kids there. Uh, what's going on, right? That uh, disability income is going to be taxable on there, right? Um, in there, it's going to be part of the earned income. If we move to the next page, right, it looks like child tax credit and credit for other dependents. It looks like she's getting 500 bucks for each of them, right? They must not be eligible for that child tax credit. Uh, but they are going to be eligible for the credit for other dependents, right? So a little bit simpler return there. Uh, the third return, you could input yourself, right? You could also use the hints in Blackboard to help you, right? So here's the third return in here, right? It looks like uh, it just must be a, a woman and her daughter. You would you know, look at the information, input it, right? A couple, there's more documents. This is going to be a little bit of a heavy lift on that one. 
then they have some questions here, right? So like right here, not required to report gambling winnings. We talked about that in class, right? Yeah, you do have to report gambling winnings. That's going to be uh, false there. So uh, with that, right, I'm going to end the video here. This is just meant to be short and introduction. I want you, you're not going to be a, a magical expert in tax software from doing this one time. Really what I'm trying to get you here is just to kind of play around in the software, see the inputs, um, get a little bit of reps and familiarity with it. It's not something you're gonna do like two little returns like this and now you're a software expert. But you are going to this like sort of general procedure if you do a tax internship, this idea of like getting work papers, inputting them into a software, outputting it, looking at that sort of government output view, that is, you know, it's meant to prepare you for practice. So I'm going to end the video here uh, for the, the basic exam.